very warm good morning to you all hope you all are safe and healthy in this time pandemic of covid 19 my then dr barkha singhal along with along with my colleague dr rekha puriya welcome you all for today's webinar on biotechnology industry scenario post covid 19 The global health crisis caused by SARS coronavirus has turned all hopes on biotechnology and biopharma sector. The industry is continuously striving for development of antiviral drugs and vaccines uh, nowadays, and biotechnology plays very pivotal role in combating this pandemic. So I must say that biotechnology is the only solution for it. Whether in terms of diagnostic, drug discovery, vaccine development, and other therapeutic modalities, therefore, the objective of this webinar is to create awareness about the current role and opportunities in biotechnology industry after COVID-19. So, dear all, today we are very much honored to have eminent speakers from Biocon Academy with us. Professor Ishwaran is there and Dr. Ram Gopal is there. Dear all, what a new name for today's world. It is one of the largest biotech company in Asia that focused on biopharmaceutical solutions ranging from discovery to development and commercialization. They also aim for cost-effective drug development capabilities and global scale manufacturing capacities. to move ideas to market therefore to accomplish this dr kiran majumdar shah chief mentor of biocon has established biocon academy with absolute commitment to create a globally competitive biotech ecosystem in india through skill development therefore the academy has committed to empower the biotechnology and engineering graduates with advanced learning and industrial proficiency through job skill development that is essential to build a promising career in biotech industry so with these objective now without taking much of your valuable time i request dr seema devedi dean school of biotechnology to give formal welcome to our speakers let me introduce dr devedi is an environmental biotechnologist and has published numerous research papers on national and international journals and she has published various books in her area so i call you in white ma'am to inaugurate today's session over to you dr seema ma'am okay thank you dr bar good morning to all my guests and my colleagues teachers and research scholars students and participants of this virtual house session Welcome to Dr. Salvadi and Dr. Ram Gopal Rao S and all present members of this session. In fact, COVID-19 pandemic has unveiled the importance of biotechnologists. WHO named this virus COVID-19 as the official name for infection caused by virus novel coronavirus. The name was suggested letter from word "co" from corona and "vi" from virus and "d" for disease. First started the China in 2019 in the month of November 2019. We all know that millions of workers and daily wages earners. are facing hard time due to losing this their jobs all business factories transportation travel tourism are badly affected due to this pandemic on other hand the corona pandemic has really unveiled the true importance of the biotechnologist biotechnology industry is also hit due to the storage of supply supply chain distribution and many other problems this pandemic has opened lots of scopes and opportunities for this industries demand for the vaccines 
drugs and other medical products using day by day the global demands could be op optional factors that can be cause the growth of biotechnology industry to a significant level scientists and researchers from biotechnology industry are working in collaboration with it sectors to develop smart rapid testing kits for covid-19 startups are also getting a major opportunities in production of such testing kits to huge number government and other authorizing bodies are inviting industries scientists biologists to understand their needs problems and challenges according to india biotech queen kiran mazumdar shah said this is a opportunity to really stand up the india biotech sector pandemic reveals that is a bigger way and they need a lot of studies research on viruses common we can understand that only science is the solution in this real time industries and laboratories are challenges and difficulties such as limited research personnel present at the same time within the labs to maintain social distancing in absence of proper technical support in a summarized manner we should understand the role of pi and changes during this pandemic periods but the role of other members of research teams including technicians graduate students post doctoral fellows and research scholars we can take advantage of all in bench work of analyze pandemic data reviews literature writer articles or dissertation explore new avenues for research industries such as in silico industry studies modeling on bioinformatics more research groups in academia and private industry are now offering free webinar to share and demonstrate new technologies and experiments protocol and very young students research will have valuable new opportunities to acquire and develop the new skills and idea to make the best of this situations thank you so much thank you uh, thank you ma'am uh, for your wonderful insight on today's pandemic and role of biotechnology industry in the uh, current scenario uh now i would like to request dr bhupen chaudhary head of the department school of biotechnology for brief introduction about our department dr chaudhary is a plant biotechnologist and working in functional genomics area he has published various papers patents and received various extra mural funding from government of india like dbt dst csir etc so therefore i request Uh, Dr. Chaudhary, to inaugurate uh, to inaugurate this session. Thank you, Dr. Tha. Thank you for uh, inviting me. Uh, respected dean, ma'am, respected Dr. Seema Duvedi, respected uh, guest speakers today, Dr. Ashwara and Dr. Rao, all faculty members of Biotechnology Department, and all students and and uh, other attending uh, other attendees. So uh, my basically I I have been assigned to just introduce my department here to, uh, before the. Yes, to speakers. So, uh, School of Biotechnology is basically having various academic programs currently being run by the by the Department of Biotechnology. We have integrated MTech program. We have MTech Biotechnology. Uh, we have MSc Biotechnology and Doctor program uh, at the at the department. And uh, for that, we have very uh, developed state of art research laboratories. and uh, innovative course curriculum has been designed to run these programs and we have highly qualified faculty members here as dr barkar just mentioned that uh, faculty members are taking their all efforts to uh, teach students and and making them research in, in different areas of biotechnology so uh, as we know that biotechnology uh, research and applications in the world we india stands basically at, at 12th uh, position 
and uh, share of around 3% in global biotech industry. Uh, on contrary, US pharmaceutical market accounts for around 45%, maybe uh, more. So this is a huge gap where we have uh, biotechnology sector needs to be improved uh, in India and more efforts to be, to be put in. And uh, interestingly, biotechnology sector has been recognized as one of the key drivers for contributing to India's 5 trillion US dollar economy target by 2024 by government of India. And this is a place where uh, we have a, uh, one of the leading uh, academies of the world, such as Bicon uh, Academy, those who are taking lead into, uh, into uh, the biotechnology research. And today's seminar on biotechnology industry scenario in post-COVID-19, Dr. Ashwaran and Dr. Ra, who can, uh, who can uh, illuminate our thinking and, and give us a good uh, experience about the current scenario of biotech industry and its future. So I think with this, I formally invite our guest speakers again for their uh, illuminating talk. And uh, now I'll, I, I, I hand it over to Dr. Bhattar Over to you, ma'am. Uh, thank you, Dr. Bhupesh, for the wonderful introduction about our department. Now I request Dr. Vila Vittoria, Director, Corporate Resource Cell, Gautam Buddha University, to share his views on today's session. Dr. Vila is actively involved in our student placement activities. So uh, I cordially invite Dr. Vittoria to share his views. Over to you, Dr. Vittoria. Thank you, Dr. Vila. Yeah. Uh, respected uh, speakers for the day, Dr. S. Ishwaran, Academic Dean, Biotech, uh, Bicon Academy, and Dr. Ram Gopal Rao, as Academic Manager, Bicon Academy. I welcome you uh, for this uh, talk. Uh, uh, as you all know, in 2019, India, Indian biotechnology touched around $65 billion and it is expected to reach about $150 billion by 2025. And as uh, our HOD, Dr. Upender has said, he, it's uh, currently we have around 3% share in the global economy and there is a huge grow, scope of growth. And it can only be achieved through uh, talented people uh, like uh, our Gautam Buddha University is producing. So a lot of research, a lot of innovation is, uh, is required to uh, reach that milestone. And uh, it's not only the industry uh, or in academia, there is a huge scope in the field of startups. Currently, India has uh, around 2,500 startups in the field of uh, biotechnology. And by 2024, uh, uh, we are expected that this figure will reach to 10,000. So, a lot of uh, talent and good uh, uh, manpower is required to reach that milestone. And I'm sure uh, by uh, today's session, uh, students will benefit how they can contribute uh, in Indian economy and how fast we can reach to the $5 trillion, uh, which is a dream of our honorable uh, Prime Minister. So, uh, good morning to all the faculty members, all the uh, students, and I expect the students will learn a lot from this session. So, uh, again, welcome to uh, the esteemed speakers. Thank you, Dr. Vittoria, for uh, sparing your valuable time for us. Now, I request Dr. Sir has rich experience of biotechnology industry as well, 
as he has worked with Biomedu, global leaders in in vitro diagnostic and industrial microbiology application. He also worked with Biozine, a leading bioprocess engineering company, as a general manager for technology and services division, where he is responsible for biopharmaceutical production, training, and regulatory services. He has also worked as technology manager at Merck Millipore. I am uh, seeking your apology, Dr. Ishwaran, if, if I miss something. So uh, I cordially invite you for your talk. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Uh, Doctor. Uh, yeah. Dr. Seema uh, and uh, Dr. Uh, and Eric's. Uh, it's a real honor and it's a real good opportunity uh, for me to uh, interact uh, with the faculty and the students uh, from uh, Gaudambutta University and other universities. So uh, first of all, thank you very much for that. and. Uh, uh, Dr. Bupendra, when he was mentioning that um, the microbiologists and biotechnologists are playing a vital role uh, in this condition, uh, COVID condition, I really uh, do not know uh, how to actually distinguish a common man and a microbiologist in today's condition. Uh, in today's condition, if you see, uh, every common man is wearing a mask, he is sanitizing his hand, he is quarantining, uh, quarantining himself, and he knows about uh, droplet infection. He, is no, he knows about pandemic infection. So I don't see a, a clear distinguishing point, or I cannot really see any difference between a microbiologist and a common man today. And uh, as it is, the human body is uh, dominated by microorganisms. Uh, so it is uh, out of uh, 300 trillion cells, only 100 trillion cells is uh, human cell. Remaining all is bacteria and uh, viruses. So essentially, uh, by carriage, we are a microbiologist. So uh, with that words, I would like to move on into the presentation. Uh, give me a second. I'm trying to uh, change my slide. Sure, sir. Sure, sir. <laughs> Wonderful. So uh, I'll take about 20, 25 minutes to do a quick uh, run through the drug discovery and uh, development and uh, with a special emphasis to uh, COVID-19. In the meantime, uh, may I request uh, all the participants to kindly uh, mute your line because there are a lot of background uh, noise coming in. Uh, once we uh, complete the presentation, uh, I'll try to take a couple of questions. So uh, with that words, uh, I'd like to move into the slides. Um, for a minute or so, I'm going to encourage the students to unmute your lines and answer some of the questions which I'm going to uh, ask you, because uh, I would like to start the uh, presentation through a quiz. Uh, can someone uh, uh, tell me uh, who's, uh, who is this in the picture? I want you to recognize who is the person in the picture. Are you able to see the uh, picture? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Mark Zuckerberg. Mark Zuckerberg. Very good. Very good. Thank you very much. It's so nice of you. Uh, I think all the faculty are listening to the amount of noise we made uh, when it comes to this particular picture. And I would like to see the same amount of noise uh, when it comes to the other pictures also. Uh, can someone tell me who is this? Yes, sir. Kiran Majumdar. Kiran Majumdar Shah. Yes, it is Kiran Majumdar Shah. Very Kiran Majumdar. Yes, thank you very much. And how about this one, this gentleman? Absolute silence here. <laughs> Good, 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 good. I completely understand. Uh, if you are following the news, uh, the company he owns is uh, gaining a lot of attention uh, nowadays. Okay. Uh, I'm going to give you a cue so that you can pick it up and tell me the answer. Uh, this company is claiming that the vaccine which they are producing is being given to every third child who is getting vaccinated in the world. And the Sanofi and Oxford University are going to manufacture their COVID vaccine in his company. Any idea? Okay, no problem. So his name is Dr. Cyrus Punawala. 
He is the owner and uh, chairman and managing director of Serum Institute of India in Pune. Okay. So the main uh, uh, point I would like to drive to all the students who are listening to this presentation is that uh, we should really know who is who in uh, the field in which we are in. And this is very, very important. Who is who is very important because at least we should know who are the key opinion leaders in the space what we are working in. Because this is going to really be an inspiring story for all of us to listen to Kiran or Dr. Cyrus Punawala's story and uh, get inspired by them, by their uh, path, and then we can set up our career path in the industry. Okay, so with that uh, introduction, I would like to get on to the uh, topic. Uh, I'm going to take uh, a quick run through, uh, through the uh, drug life cycle and uh, the opportunities around the entire drug life cycle in the industry for the microbiologist, biochemist, or uh, the biotechnologist, um, or any other bioscience uh, candidates who are listening to this uh, presentation. So the life cycle of uh, any drug starts from the identification of the indication. Uh, there is a slight difference between the drug discovery between uh, institutionalized research and uh, organizational research. When I say institutional research, I am talking about the research that is conducted in the university or it is in the college or in the government uh, funded uh, research institutes. In these cases, there can be a chance that uh, initially the molecule is identified and based on the molecule which you have in hand, you may uh, try to understand for what are all the diseases this molecule can be used. But when it comes to the organizational research, like what Biocon is uh, doing, or Dr. Reddy's laboratories is doing, or Serum Institute is doing, normally what happens is that initially we identify what is the disease on which we are going to work on. Because every organization has a strategic therapeutic line. For example, let's say Biocon. Biocon is into lifestyle lifestyle style type of diseases. So uh, we will first identify what is the indication and from that indication we move on to the actual discovery stage. So in indication what is the first thing we look at? We first look at the target. So target is the proteinaceous moiety uh, on the surface of a cell. It's commonly called as a cell receptor and uh, uh, this cell receptor is the one which attracts uh, the binding of uh, any of the foreign material to, which is invading our body, where most probably the uh, microbial invasion like uh, viruses or bacteria and so on. So the initial stage in the drug discovery is to figure out, to identify the target and once the target is identified, the target has to be validated which means you have to make sure or you have to prove that you have identified the correct target or you are, you should also make sure and you, are, you should also prove that this is the only target or is there any multiple targets in some of the disease conditions. So the first step is identification of the target and from pathway perspective, the second step is the target validation. Once the target is validated, up to here most of the time in silico work, most of the time the target validation happens in silico using the uh, bioinformatics tools. So once the target is validated, then you go in screening of the hit. Hit is nothing but the therapeutic molecule. The hit can be a protein. Or it can be an antibiotic, or it can be a synthetic material, or it can be any type of uh, natural surgical product, or so on. So these are all called as the hit molecules. So the identification of the hit uh, is uh, done to make sure to understand whether this hit is having a proper binding capacity to the target molecule. So this is where we call it as a lead. So the lead is nothing but the molecule which has a therapeutic value and also have a chemical affinity to the target molecule. So this is again done predominantly over uh, computers which is uh, in silico platforms. 
once the lead is identified when i say lead uh, please remember you are not talking about one lead one lead or a couple of leads you are talking about multiple leads uh, it is something like uh, you have a door with a lock and you do not know uh, where you have the key so generally what you do is you have uh, 10 15 key in your home and uh, you will uh, pick up at least 6 uh, 7 keys which are uh, similar and then try one by one this is exactly the case with the uh, drug discovery also so we have 6 uh, 7 um, or 30 40 leads and this lead is then optimized when i say optimized uh, it is a slight uh, structural modifications that are done uh, on the hit molecule so that you make it so perfect that the ligand binding efficacy is as proper as possible so once the lead is optimized then probably you can come to a conclusion that these lead molecules among 30 40 uh, one or two may be qualified as a drug candidate so once you identify the drug candidate then it is a, it enters into the preclinical development just before it enters into the preclinical development there is one small step which is called as formulation development formulation research and development frnd mm-hmm. this frnd is again a huge uh, department in uh, every pharma biopharma company who has a integrated research departments at least 30 40 uh, biotechnology or microbiology or uh, biochemistry chemistry scientists are working here to just understand what type of formulation has to be uh, made for the given drug molecule should it be given intravenous should it be given intramuscular should it be given as a tablet should it be used as a powder or should it be used as a topical ointment and so on so that's the role of frnd so frnd converts the drug molecule to a formulation and then it is moved into the preclinical development preclinical development is nothing but the animal study so the animal study refers to uh, also refers to a toxicological study because the idea of animal study is to find out what is the toxicological profile of the candidate drug candidate so you apply or give this drug to different animal models and you choose the animal model in such a way that this animal model is as close as possible to the uh, target uh, group for example if the target group is human being then probably the closest to mammal you have to choose uh, for all practical reasons you should be working with monkeys which is the most uh, um, uh, in uh, closest uh, uh, genomic variant genetic variant but uh, for all uh, uh, sp- uh, regulatory reasons generally we don't work with the uh, monkeys uh, but we work with other uh, mammals Uh, small mammals like mice or uh, rat or something like that so once the preclinical development is done then the t- toxicological uh, profile is created and at the same time you have a small study on efficacy which means you are proving the concept poc that is proof of concept is also done in the preclinical trial this entire information has to be gathered and it has to be submitted to the regulatory agency so the regulatory agency uh, reviews this document and this document is called as ind or inda that is uh, investigation of new drug application so once you file the investigation of new drug application then the uh, agency actually takes a decision whether to move this molecule into human trials or not so based on the safety profile and the toxicological index which you have created so once the regulatory agency approves that this candidate can be moved into the uh, clinical trials which means uh, it can be used on the human volunteers then the cl- uh, clinical trial starts the clinical trial starts with phase 0 and uh, phase 0 is otherwise called as micro dosing studies so in micro dosing a small uh, concentration of the drug is uh, given just to uh, see if everything is okay uh, you have a clear uh, information from the mammals but still just to uh, make sure before you go into a mass being uh, beings and you just give a small dose to, to see the efficacy and safety that's called as micro dosing study and after micro dosing directly you go into clinical trial phase 1 in clinical trial phase 1 the healthy volunteers are subjected to the trials and uh, the drug is administered on healthy uh, human beings to just uh, see if there is any side effect that's coming up generally there will be a side effect uh, please be informed that there is no drug uh, which is not having any it will have side effect the question is uh, uh, what is the objective of the drug well, the can be 
is not obligatory. Only those portions you have to look into. Otherwise, anyway, the drug will have a side effect. Only uh, the focus has to be the side effects that are monitored and measured in the clinical trial phase one has to be correlated to the side effects that have uh, that has been uh, observed or that have been observed in the preclinical trials with the mammals. Then it has to be correlated to the chromatogram which means the impurity profile, to correlate which impurity is producing what type of side effect. Once that is done, then it is uh, the trial moves to the phase 2 clinical trial. This is exactly what uh, we have been hearing in the news uh, nowadays, that uh, the government has uh, uh, allowed, the US government has allowed, uh, or even the Indian government uh, through ICMR, is, has allowed the drugs to move into the second phase of the trial. So this is what we are talking about. In second phase of clinical trial, the uh, human beings with the disease are uh, selected, or um, the volunteers are selected, and then the drug is administered to those volunteers who are having the specific disease for which the molecule is being developed, the therapeutic molecule has been developed. I will give specific examples on COVID in a couple of slides. The phase two is uh, primarily uh, done with a couple of objectives. Objective number one is to prove the efficacy and also to do the dosage adjustment. So you need to understand uh, what is the uh, biological equivalence and the therapeutic equivalence for the given uh, molecule. So once these two are BAB we call, so this BAB studies, once it is done, once the clarity is there that this particular molecule in this particular dosage for the given stage of the disease will work, then the trial moves to the phase 3 clinical trial. In phase 3 clinical trial, it's otherwise called as the extended phase 2 trial uh, because it is nothing but increase in the number of uh, participants. So the phase 3 is an extended phase 2 clinical trial with a lot of human volunteers involved and in this particular stage, you will also introduce some of the ethnogenicity. That means people from different uh, race and uh, traits and so on. Uh, just to make sure there is a metabolic diversity is covered. Okay, so once that is done, then the entire data is uh, collated and the data is analyzed and the analyzed data is presented to back to the regulatory agency. If the molecule is a protein or if it is a biological molecule, then the application which you are submitting to the FDA or to the Indian government is called as a BLA, Biologics License Application, or if it is a small molecule, a synthetic molecule, then it is NDA, it is New Drug Application. So once the new drug application is submitted, then again the agency takes some time to review and audit the facility, and then they give the manufacturing license. And once the manufacturing license is in place, you will be able to manufacture the product and release the product into the market. The clinical trial doesn't stop there. The clinical trial phase four happens after the product is marketed. That's why it is called as a post-marketing surveillance, or it is called as the pharmacovigilance. So in the post-marketing surveillance, the performance of the drug is closely monitored to find out if it is creating any adverse drug reaction or not. Once that is done, then the drug is left alone so that it will perform in the market. Then there are a couple of reasons why the the drug will uh, face its own death or it will vanish from the market. One, uh, the very general reason, that is the indication goes away. For example, I have created a vaccine for H1N1 and there is no H1N1 anymore. So the, the vaccine doesn't play any role. So automatically it will die off. Or there is some cases where there is an alternative therapy. Suddenly people move in from allopathy to Ayurveda or any other uh, form of medicine. So the current uh, therapeutic molecule doesn't have a role to play. So that is how the molecule starts its life and the life of the molecule ends in the market. There are cases where it will again pick up after some time when the indication reoccurs. So that is the overall picture of uh, the drug life cycle, uh, starting from the identification of the molecule and all the way up to the drug safety in the marketplace, that is uh, pharmacovigilance. Now, uh, we'll quickly have a view of uh, how much time it takes uh, to complete all these uh, activities. In the general pathway, I'm not talking about COVID here, I'm not talking about an accelerated pathway here. We are talking about a general pathway. In general pathway, 
6.5 years goes only in the drug discovery stage. And then one and a half years in phase one, two years in phase two, 3.5 years in phase three. And is in uh, waiting for the approval. So which means approximately nine to 10 years goes, which means a molecule from the conceptual stage. And when it reaches the market, it takes about 10 years. Okay. This is this understanding is very very important for all the microbiologists and biotechnologists uh, who, uh, who are aspiring to get into the market to get into the job in biotech industry because it is not like IT it is not like a software the software is developed in couple of weeks and the validation is done in another couple of weeks for example let's say WhatsApp WhatsApp application is developed in two weeks and validation is done in two weeks in one month the product is out okay and this type of turnaround is never possible with the biological molecules or even any of the chemical molecules so you need to be patient the industry in which you want to work is like this you have to be very patient with uh, your job you cannot really equate two jobs together the way the pay, the way the salary is structured in you know, IT is different from BT that is biotechnology but if you actually see if you actually talk to your friends over a period of three four years more or less you will become equal but the initial stages certainly it is going to be very different so I want you to be absolutely aware of this fact the reason why I uh, brought up this point is also to invite all of you to be very passionate about this particular uh, subject which you are dry, uh, reading, that is the bioscience or a biotechnology. Because this field has a privilege of working with lives and saving lives. Okay, So we have to be really passionate and we have to be feeling really privileged to be working in this particular domain. So, as you can see here, the entire drug discovery has demand for microbiology, biotechnology, and other sciences. And the entire preclinical to the phase three, you uh, need a lot of zoology, uh, microbiology, biotechnology, and pharmacy students. And after the product is you know, getting into the manufacturing stage and all the way up to the post marketing surveillance, you need licensed biotechnology pharmacy chemistry students. These are the general demands in the industry, particular, particular to each portion of the life cycle of your drug. Okay, so before we uh, move into the different uh, uh, research or uh, the R&D approaches uh, for coronavirus, uh, I would like to quickly, uh, I'd like you to quickly look into this, the mechanism, because understanding disease mechanism is very important. ...to show how SCOV-2 infects humans. The study published in Science... Are you able to see the video? ...receptor found on cells... Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Biologist Mark Fielder, Sky News reports that the virus seems to attack two Are you listen video audio also? Audio is not very much clear, but uh, video is clear, sir. Without pathogens. No problem. Video? Okay. Please listen to the next word. Downward and another basic word. These allow the virus to bind with and in human cell. It's a human ACE2 receptor okay. that has bonded with an amino acid transporter. This subtype of ACE2 structure has never been discovered before. The virus uses the spike proteins of RBD to penetrate the cell. The virus then dissolves its own protein shell and releases its RNA payload inside the cell, according to British Society for Immunology. A scene from tears in my microbiology has a well structure to reproduce. For viral RNA host cells endoplasmic reticulum to replicate itself and to manufacture the protein parts to make new viruses. According to the Society for Immunology, the hijacked cells go to bought package viral RNA and proteins in a viral cell. This leads to the creation of new viruses that leave the infected cell via the membrane. The study in Frontiers in Microbiology says coronavirus takeover imposes when the infection overwhelms the host cell's ability to maintain homeostasis. Okay, 
uh, as we have uh, seen in the video, uh, the disease mechanism is pretty straightforward uh, when it comes to the uh, COVID or the coronavirus disease, where the ACE2 receptor in the pulmonary cells uh, is uh, the target, and the ACE2 receptor um, having is having an affinity uh, or the specific binding capacity for the spike proteins uh, in the coronavirus on the coronavirus. Uh, capsule right so now we all know what are we talking about as the target so we are talking about the ace2 receptor on the pulmonary cells of human being as the uh, target so uh, there, there are a lot of uh, research approaches uh, to the covid-19 uh, i'll take you through one by one the first one is the reinvention of the wheel um, way back in um, 100 years before uh, we had this plasma, plasma transfusion uh, methodology where it le led to the discovery of vaccine uh, as it is so even today uh, this approach is uh, viable and for coronavirus treatment people are uh, transferring the plasma from the COVID recovered uh, youngsters to the critically ill patients or the old age patients. That is the first uh, approach. And uh, now uh, there are approaches where there are a lot of existing molecules that are repurposed for the uh, COVID-19 uh, disease okay, or COVID uh, disease. So when you say repurposing, which means that originally these drugs are developed for a different reason, but now we are going to use these drugs for the coronavirus treatment or COVID treatment. So one of the common one is the HCQ, that is hydroxychloroquine. The, I'll take you through the mechanism in the next slide. And hydroxychloroquine is originally developed for the uh, control of malaria or treatment of malaria. Itulizumab is uh, originally developed for psoriasis, that is the skin disease. And uh, Remdesivir is a uh, antiviral uh, compound that is originally developed for uh, uh, a different uh, uh, viral disease. Okay, so uh, now these are the uh, drugs which are actually developed for some other disease. Now all these are repurposed for the purpose of uh, treatment of cor coronavirus or coronavirus disease. Uh, there are some new uh, drugs that are being proposed. The name Watson comes because we all need to understand that the time is changing. The time, uh, uh, this uh, uh, IBM Watson uh, is a uh, artificial intelligence platform which has given approximately 68 new molecules, brand new molecules, which can be tested against uh, coronavirus. And uh, the other approach is the preventive approach where the Oxford and AstraZeneca are working on, which is going to be manufactured at Serum Institute of India. As well, uh, there is another vaccine with the ICMR at Bharat Biotech. So these are the different uh, approaches as far as the COVID therapy is concerned. Now, if I get into any one molecule, for uh, example, that, that is hydroxychloroquine, as you saw in the video, the first step is endocytosis. So the endocytosis of the virus happens because of its successful binding to the ACE2 receptor. As you can see here, the ACE2 receptor, give me one second, please. Um, so this is the S2 receptor, and there is a sialic acid moiety also attached to this. Okay, so when the spike protein is attaching to the S2 receptor, it has to it has to asso associate with both the sialic acid as well as the S2 receptor. So once you have an ability to block this entire S2 receptor, that is the first level of success. So the hydroxychloroquine goes and binds to the S2 receptor because it is having better affinity than the uh, spike protein. So when there is a population of viruses, viral load in the cell, in the, in the blood, as well as if you have hydroxychloroquine, the preference goes to hydroxychloroquine. That is how the hydroxychloroquine is blocking the ACE2 receptor. And sometimes if the uh, moiety, if the G protein is about to attach, and if hydroxychloroquine attaches to the sialic acid, in both those stages, what happens is that these ACE2 receptors are completely nullified, which means there is no possibility of the spike protein to attach itself. So endocytosis is prevented. This is one approach. The second approach is to is a different approach, where, for example, let's say the virus has attached. Okay, if the virus has attached and if you have zinc in the cell or if you have zinc in the free-flowing circulation, then the zinc 
is having a capability of attaching to the RNA polymerase and break the RNA polymerase chain, which means the RNA polymerization will not happen, which means the viral replication will not happen. Even if the virus has gone into the cell or, or the virus has sent the RNA material into the cell, as all of you know that the coronavirus is a RNA virus, so it depends on the host cell mechanism for the uh, replication. So the RNA goes into the cell and the zinc from the external environment is taken into the cell because the hydroxychloroquine is a zinc ionophore. Because it is a zinc ionophore, it blocks the replication of the coronavirus after the intake of the zinc into the uh, cytoplasm. So these are the three mechanisms with which the hydroxychloroquine works. So as uh, I was telling you in the initial uh, slide of drug discovery, these are all the approaches they are looking into for the drug binding studies. One that, uh, once the drug binding studies are proven, then it moves into the candidate level. Now it has come up to the phase one and phase two trials. And the major difference I would like all of us to understand between the normal pathway and the accelerated pathway is that the regulatory agencies has an authority to shrink the number of years to months when there is a need. That is exactly what they are doing uh, for the coronavirus. They have done it for influenza also, H1N1 also. In past, for a lot of viruses, they have done that. Okay, Now they are also doing for uh, covid uh, uh, vaccine also. The, the total period can be shrunk uh, from 10 years to even uh, one and a half years. So that is the reason why most of the time we are seeing in the news that the vaccine will be out by December or maximum early 2021. This is the reason for that. Okay. Now, it is very important for all of us to understand from these slides that the disease, uh, the drug discovery development cycle is a very, very large process. And very unfortunate part is that this entire drug discovery and development pathway works with a success rate of 8%. That means if you take 100 molecules into the pathway, Starting from 10,000 molecules into the drug discovery stage, from the development pathway itself, if you take 100 molecules, the possibility of hitting a success rate is only 8%. So to increase this entire uh, success rate, it is very important for us to uh, see how to move from a structure-based discovery to an evidence-based discovery. This transition particularly the biotechnology, microbiology, biochemistry students in this era should understand this pathway very clearly because I really do not want you also to work or think like what we were doing. When we were doing, we took 12 years to develop, develop a de molecule. But in your age, the technologies are available. The database which is available, which can be used as a pivotal the starting part, starting part for the AI-mediated uh, AI drug discovery. This particular pathway, what you are seeing, is called as a generatory advisorial network, GAN uh, uh, pathway or algorithm. In this algorithm, what happens is that based on the historical data, the AI platform will propose some of the disease, uh, some of the uh, drug molecules. And these drug molecules are twice validated inside the system itself. Okay, uh, this, We can actually speak in length about this entire pathway, but put it in a, in a um, short, this uh, output of the uh, output of this GNN or GAN uh, network is very, very efficient. For us to understand or for us to grab this opportunity, of this computational biology era, the artificial intelligence era, what I would like to uh, uh, take attention of all the students is that along with your uh, postgraduate or along with your uh, engineering degree, it is very, very important for all of us to have additional certifications, may it be C or C++ or Java or R or Python, because there are exciting, uh, exciting jobs, exciting types of roles that are available in this particular space, which were not available five years before, 10 years before. So now this is the time I 
really urge all the students to utilize the opportunity of combining the data science and your domain expertise to actually get a very meaningful and very exciting career ahead. I would like to take a few uh, minutes uh, with Biocon Academy, uh, which I am representing. It is a CSR arm of uh, Biocon Limited. I am sure uh, Dr. Ram will also touch upon this uh, to give a very brief out, uh, overview. What we are doing at Biocon Academy is that we provide training for the students who have completed B Biotech, B Tech Biotech, MSc biotech or any of the biological sciences for about four months to uh, different types of programs are available the bioscience program is uh, four months microbiology is two months quality control analytical is about two months so it's all short-term uh, training courses and in the training courses we give theory uh, that is industry specific theory we give functional visit that is direct visit to the plant we give hands-on training and we also work on professional skill development. So we work with the K Graduate Institute at California. We work with Bitspinani in India. We work with Ramaya University in uh, India, Bangalore for these different programs what I have been mentioning. We are also offering a couple of weeks program for the faculty who are teaching biotechnology or any of the biological sciences through faculty development program. And I think we have the opportunity of having some of the alumni in this meeting also. The functional visits are done at Biocon and St. Jean, and for the hands-on training, we are tied up with uh, Biozin and uh, Thermo Fisher, and for the professional skills, Ramanan and Co., and we have an in-house uh, coach also. And through this particular model, we are able to place the students in all the companies which you are seeing. So the names of the companies are the big shots in, are the very common ones in the biotechnology uh, domain area. So we are placing all the students in the core area itself. More than 600 students have passed uh, uh, these courses in the last six years. And I'm very uh, excited and proud to say that we are having 100% placement record all the way through from the day one up to the six years. More than 25 batches we have done. And all the 25 batches have been placed successfully in different industries across India. So thank you very much uh, for your patience uh, listening. And uh, I have a quick uh, request. Uh, before that, I would like to stop sharing and then... Okay, I have a, a quick request uh, for uh, the uh, faculty uh, as well as the students. Uh, if you can kindly post the questions to uh, Dr. Ram, uh, if you have any questions, because uh, I'm in a very different situation. As you can see, I'm taking this entire uh, webinar from the car I'm driving. Uh, so uh, uh, I have a hard stop here. If you want, I can take only one question, and then I'll hand it over to Dr. Ram Gopal. Thank you very much for all of you. Uh, let's take one, uh, some questions from the chat box. Uh, sir, we have a quickly one question. Do Biocon Academy provides research internship to undergrad students? The research internship is a specific program which is done by Biocon, not Biocon Academy. If you're really interested, you can post your uh, resume to Biocon Academy. Uh, in the last slide, uh, I gave you the email ID. And I'll also encourage Dr. Ram Gopal to share our email ID. And you can post it to us. We can give it to the internship department that we can always do. Okay. Thank you very much, sir. We are really honored, uh, Dr. Ishwaran. Sir has meticulously uh, described the life cycle of drug development and uh, uh, commercialization process. He also emphasized the molecular mechanism of coronavirus action in human body. Sir has given valuable insight on various uh, therapeutic approaches as well as he gave valuable insights on interdisciplinary uh, sciences, data sciences, as well as the computational biological approaches for combating this uh, pandemic. Sir, so our students are really benefited uh, and enlightened uh, with your talk. Uh, thank you once again. And sir has to leave early. Uh, so, uh, from uh, on behalf of School of Biotechnology, I really uh, thankful uh, to you, sir, for spending your valuable time.